Good evening, folks. I'm glad to be back with you on this Sunday evening, starting day number three. I hope you can hear in the background the Canadian geese as they're flying over. Now, that's generally a good sign. Uh, I'm glad we have a big backyard. If we can't get out further to do activities for a while, at least there's the promise of spring. The kids built some snowmen today and had a wonderful day. And now we're just going to take a few moments to go through the next in our chapters, uh, day three of 40 Days of Prayer. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for giving us your word, for inspiring men of old and even men more recently to put together material that is important for us to read as we prepare for your soon coming. Lord, as we read this book each and every day and as we pray together, as we reflect on the questions, Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit would continue to move in deeper and deeper into our hearts and minds and lives. Begin to remove the stony areas. Replace our hearts with hearts of flesh. Hearts for only your service. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Day number three, the benefits of receiving the Holy Spirit. What happens when we ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit? A few examples of the changes the infilling of the Spirit will bring to the life of the receiver are, number one, a stronger desire to study God's Word, number two, a more earnest prayer life, number three, a deeper repentance for our sins, and number four, changes in lifestyles and activities. The infilling of the Spirit is necessary for the believer to walk victoriously in Christ. According to the Bible, one does not know Christ in the fullest biblical sense without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. This is illustrated in the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25, 1-13, in which Christ told the foolish virgins who were without the oil of the Spirit, I do not know you. Here as well as in other scriptures, Christ speaks of not knowing someone. For example, Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Once again, Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Simply knowing the teachings of Jesus or engaging in active ministry for Jesus is not a substitute for knowing him intimately through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to stop there for a moment. I believe this time we have right now to stay in our homes, to spend time getting to know Jesus better, may take some of us out, out of what we thought was our active ministry. But it may cause us to have more inward reflection, more time to, to see what else God would have us do to draw closer to him, so that when we can go back out and witness, we can do it with a double portion of the Spirit flowing in us and through us. Amen? Water baptism is similar to the wedding service, while spirit baptism is symbolized by the consummation of the marriage when the bride knows her bridegroom. Satan will resist this work fiercely, for he is aware that the spirit's infilling will break his power in the life of the believer. Understanding and experiencing the infilling of the Holy Spirit is second in importance only to understanding and accepting Jesus as our personal Savior. Another very important point is that we must renew this infilling every day. It is not a once forever experience. You know, I have friends who say, I was saved in 1984. They've lived however they wanted to since, but they're convinced they're okay. The Bible doesn't teach that. And we need to understand that we need to daily give our lives to Jesus. Paul tells us, back to our story, Paul tells us that the inward man is being renewed day by day, 2 Corinthians 4, 16. We need the renewing of the Spirit every day in our lives. 
Paul's command to be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5.18, is a continuous action verb in the Greek, meaning we are to keep on being filled with the Spirit daily. Christ is our example in all things. Ellen White wrote this, Daily he received a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the early hours of the new day, the Lord awakened him from his slumbers, and his soul and his lips were anointed with grace that he might impart to others. Christ's Object Lesson, page 139. If Christ worked so closely with the Holy Spirit while he was on earth, Christians surely need to pray for the daily presence of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Our growth into the fullness of Christ by the Spirit is a process. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Spiritual growth is a process into which we must enter anew every day. That means yesterday you may have been doing things that you don't do today because the Holy Spirit has enlightened you and you've been transformed and tomorrow might even be different than today. But let's live each day being led by the Spirit, being perfected from glory to glory until Christ returns. That is the only way that we'll hear those wonderful words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Ellen White described the development of character the recipient of the Spirit's infilling of the infilling receives when she wrote this, when the Spirit of God takes possession of the heart, it transforms the life. Sinful thoughts are put away. Evil deeds are renounced. Love, humility, and peace take the place of anger, anger envy, and strife. Joy takes the place of sadness, and the countenance reflects the light of heaven. Desire of Ages, page 173. What a wonderful blessing our Lord has provided for each of us through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That concludes our reading for day three in our 40 days of prayer. I would encourage you, once again, I'll be taking a picture of this last page uh, so that you can reflect on these questions. Uh, talk about them maybe with your prayer partner. Reflect on them for yourself and, and really let this experience begin to impress on your heart and mind what Jesus has in store for you. I'm excited to hear everyone's testimony at the close of this as to what God has been doing in their life. Until tomorrow evening, let us be faithful and continue to study and pray and come into a closer communion with one another and with our Lord and Savior. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we're three days into this time of prayer. I pray that by now we're kind of getting a stride as to what we're doing. I pray that it's causing us to think more throughout the day about the process we're going through, what it means in our life, and how it will change us and those we are around. Bless us now, Lord, as we continue to study. Lord, we pray as well for those that are dealing with this affirmity throughout the world. Be with each one of them. Somehow, Lord, may you be glorified and may your name be lifted up. Uh, as you reveal your wonderful works and your mighty power in this situation that is going on in the world today. Lord, bless us now, we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have a wonderful evening.